sê rapak ek maar oons oor hier. Goed hee, my dear friends, the highest vision for us on self-determination comes from the deepest insight that the collective conscience of the Taiwanese should be liberated from the entangling conflicts between the colonizing settler peoples and the colonized indigenous peoples that has tortured and distorted all our humanity. Seeking an equitable and sustainable Taiwan, we launched the mission to liberate the colonial relationship and initiate an inclusive new nation building together in 2019. It's based on the indigenous ecological wisdom to hear the trauma of colonization and exploitation that have caused the pervasive insanity, malfunction, and anomaly besides corruption and destruction on this land and its peoples. Let's conserve the animistic territories of life for all beings around us, adhering to the ultimate value of the trinity of language, culture, and biological diversity and jointly implementing a new model of governance on the grounds of impatedness and connectedness. At the time when the National Human Rights Commission was established on 1st August 2020, the Indigenous Taiwan Self-Determination Alliance requested the government to implement the connotation of Article 1 in both the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and on Economic social and cultural rights, which is on the rights of self-determination for all peoples. In accordance with the act to implement the two international covenants on human rights announced in April 2009 in Taiwan, the government should deal proactively with the four conditions of liberating the colonial relationship, which are recovering indigenous sovereignty, returning traditional territories, compensating for historical damages, and offering necessary assistance to restore the disturbed tribal communities at their full scale and scope, and work together on the consensus vision of reconciliation and restoration. Appealing on the grounds of recognizing the natural sovereignty of the indigenous peoples, we would collaborate with the old and the new Chinese immigrants and those latest residents who came from Southeast Asia to rebuild and identity of original Taiwan, and to restore the homeland connectedness for all in the process of sustainable self-determination. A delegation of indigenous Taiwanese visited the presidential office on 14th September 2020 to declare its public statement for negotiating decolonization, self-determination, and inclusive new nation building together. We were politely received by the staff and guards of the president without a formal response from her, who issued a formal apology to indigenous peoples in 2016. Just like a voice crying in the wilderness, it seems that the indigenous peoples are always going far beyond the mainstream politicians. There is a structural basis and a strength preparations for our visionary initiative. We have established a joint declarations of traditional territories with mutual recognition of natural sovereignty among tribal communities, and promoted the arrangement of ethnic and regional and confederacy treaty organizations among indigenous peoples. We are further proposing to organize the United Assembly of Indigenous Peoples Confederacy Councils to build up indigenous political entities and develop tribal community self-governance capacity. Moving forward, we are open to exchange and collaborate with our international partners on the discourse and the praxis of critical subjects below. The natural sovereignty of tribal communities existed before any state regimes and is based on maintaining the rights of nature. Indigenous decolonization countering the myth of a unified nation state will evolve into a pluralistic framework for natural and cultural diversity and complexity. Sustainable self-determination and inclusive new nation building are for conserving the trinity of language, culture, and biological diversity. Indigenous rights and customary institutions are based only on the tribal community connected to and embedded in their interspecies habitats, cross generations, it is the, the territories of life. 
Professor Jeff Contasso, the Cherokee scholar, reviewed to us the concept of sustainable self-determination. We are currently preparing to call a virtual workshop series on indigenous decolonization and sustainable self-determination, starting with some IPOs that are in the same struggle and have been contacted and connected. It would be great to hold the events for deeper mutual learning and feasible solidarity collaboration on their tough campaigns and remarkable deeds and feats. We look forward to reflecting and envisioning with the diverse indigenous insights and visions on the following basic questions for action. How can the indigenous communities keep or restore their traditional living space and spiritual territories alongside and beyond the state ap apparatus and within and without the global market system? Does our embeddedness and connectedness that is deep-rooted in the natural environment and interspecies habitats make our ultimate resilience or become our fundamental vulnerability? Let's rethink it from our living tradition of adaptation and innovation that has gone through radical changes across generations and throughout millennia. Unutandu fukuono sawalanyo, follow the flow of your irrigation channel. Nagata, Jeff Ganoholito, Corntassel, Dagwadoa, Shalagi, Aetli, Aguena Sai, Echoda, Galskiko E. So, hello everyone, my name is Jeff Corntassel. I'm from Cherokee Nation, and my Cherokee name is Ganoholito, which means hunter. And I'm coming to you today from the unceded lands of the South Nation. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the future of our lands and our relationships. So, uh, it starts for me with. Um, model of leadership by the late Benny Smith, the Cherokee elder. And Benny always told me that leadership really starts with the individual. So it starts with a vision or a dream that someone has, and then you have to make that vision or dream relatable or, or applicable to your everyday life. And at that point, after you've made it kind of uh, a daily part of your existence, you have to relate it to other people. So people have to be able to understand your vision and how you put it into practice and then you mobilize people for change and so you think about that that model of leadership is embedded in a lot of our different communities a lot of our different um, ways of knowing it's leadership by example and so you don't start by mobilizing people you start with that individual and that individual's vision and so in that sense I think of uh, you know different strategies that we've that we've adopted around uh, protecting the territories of life that are so uh, integral to our future, that so integral to our health and well-being as indigenous peoples. And uh, I think a lot of our strategy uh, should be around cultivating youth, uh, and the leadership qualities of youth, and finding ways to uh, share this knowledge, share these these stories, share these these languages share these uh, these ways of knowing uh, with the youth uh, so that they can pick it up and so that they can take it up uh, so much of the impediment for action today is intimidation and people are fearful people are intimidated we're living in a time of pandemic and so finding different ways through that is so valuable and I think of the different examples that are out there uh, the Salween Peace Park, for example, in Burma, uh, which is a, um, a place of refuge, but it's also a place of protection, uh, where Karen peoples are, are protecting the land from incursion, from military onslaught. And I think in, on Turtle Island, I think of the visions of people like Leroy Little Bear, who've created the Bison Treaty or the Buffalo Treaty which is to protect and honor that relationship, that sacred relationship to Buffalo. Um, and it's resulted in 29 uh, different nations signing on and it uh, traverses the, uh, the U.S.-Canadian border. I also you know, think about how closely interrelated land and body are, right? What happens to the land also happens to our body. So we need to be uh, understanding that what makes us vulnerable also makes us strong. And so those vulnerabilities come out in times of extraction, uh, the extractive, uh, extractivist resource 
um, mining that impact disproportionately uh, girls, women, uh, two-spirited queer peoples. And so we need to honor uh, that and hold up those land defenders that are protecting our territories of life. Wado.